So hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my fancy really. But today we're going to be talking about the things that I've been making in January. So grab a brew and let's get started. Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. Now I will normally be trying to put up my what I've made the previous month videos at the beginning of the month, but as we have Valentine's weekend coming up, um, I wanted to make sure the Valentine's pattern video got out first. So it's a little bit delayed this month, but never mind. Um, so well, first things first, what am I wearing? Now this is the Knitting Expat Design Parisian Dreams which I made a little while ago, I think about a year, two years ago and it's made out of Mirasol's Silca Legato so it's an alpaca silk wool blend, it's super super soft I haven't had too many difficulties with it growing out of shape the silk has really upheld it um, to its shape I've uh, got sort of bracelet length sleeves on it and I cropped the jumper length to, to the waist rather than down to the hips um, as well so yeah, I do wear this from, from time to time. The only little thing I, I've got to niggle with it is being alpaca, it is a little bit prone to felting. So I have got in the, the points that get friction, so kind of under the arm where things rub a little bit, slight bit of felting going on, but not too much. Um, and yeah, it's a super soft next to the skin. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this particular jumper. There are a couple of changes I would make if I did it again. I mean, I would think about continuing the lace around the back or putting some short rows in the back because at the moment the stocking stitch back sits slightly higher than the front which is not a massive issue in the grand scheme of things because I tend to wear this over of dresses and things um, but yeah it would just be nice to have that slightly more even I will probably make the sleeves longer next time um, but yeah this is really comfy and it, it does the job that it was designed for so that's what I'm wearing and I'm moving on to finished objects now my finished objects this week or this month are basically all sewing and um, you will have seen one of them already and that's the Queen's Gambit dress um, that I did the make along how I did it process video playlist that's available on the channel so feel free to, to pop and have a look at that once you finish watching today's video if you would like and um, the fabric is a tartan polyester suiting from Minerva.com that they sent me in return for a blog post so I will link to the blog post and the fabric down below in the description box in fact all my finished objects are fabric provided by Minerva.com for blog posts so there will be Minerva.com links down below they will be affiliate links to the fabrics um, which basically means if you click on them and buy something Minerva gives me a little bit of money but it doesn't cost you any more so it's kind of a win-win and um, so my next uh, finished product to show you is a free pattern by Forget Me Not Patterns it's the Vera top which I've made in uh, what's listed on Minerva as a slub sweatshirt knit. Um, it's very sheer for a sweatshirt knit. Um, it's it's more of a kind of mesh-like knit fabric, um, but it will work well for sweatshirt patterns if you're looking for something kind of light and airy for summer um, or beach cover-ups, that kind of thing. Um, and it was a joy to work with. Um, I love this top. I'm going to be making quite a few of those in jerseys and other knit fabrics um, quite a lot. Um, the sleeve surprised me. I thought I'd give them a try as the fabric was so thin um, uh, so I knew it would go underneath jacket sleeves and jumper sleeves and what have you but actually I quite like wearing them. So I'm going to be doing that in a bit of heavier weight fabric as well at some point in the future, who knows when. So my final finished object for January is the SOS pants from Patterns for Pirates. Now I've made the straight leg version of this pattern, they also come in a slim leg pattern and I've used the bolt on, the, the free add on from the peg legs pattern that I've made previously for chub shorts, the, the contour waistband to, to raise the waist up to nearer my natural waist because I prefer that than the elasticated waistband that came on the SOS pants pattern originally. Um, they also come with a uh, free add-on moto knee patch 
thing that I want to try at some point. And I do want to try making them in the slim leg at some point too. Um, the reason I didn't this time was because I was looking for something to wear for, for work. So the straight leg seemed a little bit more work appropriate. However, to get the fit round right around the weight in the hips, which it is, it's brilliant, they're really comfy. Um, it meant that the bottom of the legs was a little bit wider than I was really looking for. So that in combination with the fact that I stretched out the fabric slightly um, as I was sewing up the inseam meant that I've had to take in the legs and taper them from the knee to the ankle uh, on that inseam and chop off some of the fabric um, to get a better um, fit around the ankle and to get rid of that wobbly seam. Um, but all in all, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with them. They, they do get a fair bit of wear and they are nice and comfy. So that's my January finished objects and moving on to works in progress. Now, most of these are things that you see, well, I say most, some of these are things that you will have seen before um, because I will have talked about them or shown them to you in the last podcast episode in January. So first of all, I am trying to get through some of my whips that have been on the needles for years. So I picked up um, early in January with some of my online knit night friends the Oracle Shawl by uh, Kirsten Lehrer of Vullenwein. It's a little bit squished up on the needles here because we are getting quite big now. Um, this has been in time out for about a week um, because I've realised that way back in 2018 when I, I cast on, I would got this lace pattern wrong here. It's, it's right when I come back to it here. Um, and I'm now on the last lace pattern. Um, but I think that being wrong here has thrown the stitches out, stitch count out, because I'm I'm 11 stitches out now that I'm onto the final lace pattern. Um, I'm 11 stitches too many, and it's a 12 stitch repeat. So it's been in time out for about a week. Um, but I think what I'm probably going to do is just add in one stitch and uh, go with the 12 stitch repeat from here, because <laughs> I am not ripping out brioche lace, brioche to get back to where I was back in 2018 to fix it. Yeah. Um, this actually looks fine. It, it doesn't, it's not right, but it looks fine. Um, it just looks different to, to what it's supposed to, which is more like this. Um, the yarn dyer that I use for this is not currently dyeing. I will obviously put the details on the screen and in the description box down below for you. Um, but yeah, she's not currently dyeing, um, unfortunately. Um, but I'm knitting this out of singles, um, hand dyed yarn. So that's my Oracle pie shawl. It will be my first pie shawl when I finish it. Um, I haven't done anything on my lace beaded shawl that I showed you um, last month. I really ought to. I'm on the border. It's not that much left to do. Um, but I just need the right headspace and length of block of time to, to sit and do it because it's such a fine project. I don't want to mess it up. Um, I have, however, been working on my New Year's Eve cast on, which is my first West Knits project. Um, it's a half circle shawl. Um, yeah, I'm currently waiting to join another colour in, so it's not attached to a ball at the moment. This was part of the Hiber Knit Along, but I wasn't doing it as part of the Hiber Knit Along, mainly because I forgot what date it finished. <laughs> so this is the Winter Light Shawl. Again, it's a little bit squished on the needle because we're on to, to long stitch counts now. Um, the yarns I am using for the main colour, I'm using the same Mirasol Sol Colorado that I used for this jumper. So this is the leftovers. Um, from that jumper. Um, the light blue and the navy blue are both Hobby um, Happy Feet Sock Wool. Um, so Hobby is a Danish budget commercial yarn company. Um, very affordable, very quick to send things out with reasonably priced postage, or at least they were before Brexit. Who knows what it'd be like now. Um, the third colour this is this gradient yarn which is Debbie Bliss Rialto. So that's going from blues through beiges and greens as we go down the shawl. Um, I am also on the border of this one now. So I've got a stripe of the Rialto to do and then another stripe of all three. And then I will decide whether I want to extend the border any further. I might, because why not, quite frankly. Um, I'm just on, on garter stitches with a little bit of eyelid patterning to, to make the border wavy like it is in the, the pattern. Um, so I'll put a picture up, obviously, of, of the actual pattern, um, just like I did for the Villain Vine one on screen, so that you can see what it's supposed to look like. Because uh, when they're squished up on the, the needles, it's a little bit tricky to see. Um, 
the next two projects I'm going to show you are related projects. One is a long-standing whip that's been on the needles for at least two years, if not three, and it's massive, so I will have to put a photo on the screen as well as showing it to you in person. And that is my Sophie's Universe blanket, um, which is, as I say, rather massive, hiding me completely. I'm under here somewhere. Um, so this I've worked in a gradient yarn, um, it is this yarn, which is an acrylic, it's Woolcraft Ghetto, um, which comes with these massive gradients, rather than changing colours left, right and centre, I have this one left in this colourway, which is already attached to the blanket, and then I did pick up a contrast one here, um, because to extend the blanket you can put some some squares on, some granny squares, um, at, at either end to turn it into a rectangle instead of a square and I had the thought when I was planning it out years ago to, to do those in a contrast rather than in the same and uh, we'll see whether I, I stick to that or whether I do something different and if I run out of the dark yarn I will have to try and hunt some down because it's years since I bought some, I don't even know if they still make it. I'm sure I'll find something similar if they don't. Um, so that's Sophie's Universe, which is by Deidre Is Is I don't know how to say your name, Deidre. Deidre. So look what I made, blog. Um, I think she's South African, but lives in the UK. So the related project that's going to be a year-long project is um, another blanket, and it is actually using the same central block pattern as Sophie's Universe. It's using the Sophie's Garden block. Um, on the, the blog there's a variation of the blanket called Sophie's Dream which is made up of 12 Sophie's Garden blocks. So this is in fingering weight. Uh, this is a very variegated yarn from Game of Crafting. It's in her Sparkle Sock Base and it's from her Blanket Club um, this year which is galaxy themed. So obviously being so variegated you are losing some of the definition of the, the pattern visually that you, you got on the big blanket which I will leave up here so you can compare the two um, because this is just a central block so it's kind of tilted like that in the main one um, but being a blanket I think that the texture is more important in a way than the visuals and you do still get that te texture from the, the front post, back post um, crochets and the, the bobbles and, and things so I am pleased with how this has turned out and it is going to look a little bit different each month because it's going to be different yarn each month and at the end of the year I'll have 12 of these blocks to stick together um, I have measured it out against a blanket that I snuggle under in the living room and it is going to work out to be almost the same size. Uh, they're about 13 and a half inches squares. Um, with the Gamer Crafting Blanket Club you get two skeins of yarn each month. Um, so this is the other skein. Um, and because I'm only going to be doing the 12 blocks rather than 24 which would be a massive blanket which if I was doing it for the bed would be fine uh, but I'm doing it for the living room. Which does mean that um, once I've made the blanket, I'm going to have some sock yarn in the stash, which is good. And um, there's a little bit left over. Um, I'm hoping that the leftovers will be enough to join the squares together and then do the border. Um, but obviously, I will have my second skeins as well for that. Now, my final work in progress is actually going to roll us straight over into plans. I've actually got quite a short episode this week. Um, Mina of Knitting Expat, Grace of Brabble's Travelling Yarns and Mars of um, Hey Branberry have joined forces this year to do Fluff to Stuff 2021 which is the reincarnation of the Spinner Make Along that Grace and Mina did a couple of years ago which I was fortunate enough to, to win some fibre out of so I'll be spinning that up later in the year. Um, so the purpose of the, the, the project, the, the year long challenge is to have some sense of what you would like your fibre to be when you spin it, before you spin it, so that you end up with a yarn that is suitable for the project you have in mind. Um, and it's not hard and fast, it's fairly casual, so if you change your mind that's fine. Um, it's going to go from, well, now, it started at the very end of January and it's going to run until November. Um, and I actually got some bats for Christmas from, they were sent to me, from an Etsy seller, it's my partner's brother who's paid for them. Um, I, I picked them out, but he paid for them. Um, so from Marie Redding on Etsy, and they are Griffin, or the Griffin, 
Mr. Collins and Kings and Queens. So one is Narnia themed, one is Pride and Prejudice themed and one is Alice in Wonderland themed. So I've already started spinning up on my drop spindle the griffin. But I'll just show you that there on the the spindle. Um, so I, I've prepared some little knobs. These are the ones I've got to spin next. And I've still got the other half of the bat um, to prep and spin. So they're 50 gram bats. I will show you obviously what they originally looked like before I prepped them um, up on the screen. And then after that I have the other two bats in this box. This is the box they were sent to me in. Um, and there are a couple of little extra bits just sort of shoved in there as well. Um, I think that one is Mr Collins. Yeah, that one's Mr Collins with the white in it. And this one is Kings and Queens. I'll leave them rolled up for now, but I will put the, the picture up of them rolled out on the, the screen. So we have the griffin all rolled out. We have Mr Collins all rolled out. And we have Kings and Queens all rolled out. So obviously Kings and Queens is the Narnia, Mr Collins is the Pride, Pride and Prejudice, and the Griffin is Alice in Wonderland. Um, they're all 50 gram bats and I'm hoping to get a shawl out of them. I am thinking at the moment that I'm going to spin them for singles. I've never spun spin singles before and being a spindle spinner I'm a little bit um, intrigued as to how they will, will turn out. <laughs> But that way I'm going to maximise the yardage because they are only 50 gram bats. If I two plied them I am effectively halving my yardage um, which will make for a smaller shawl which is not necessarily a problem. I may decide once I've spun the first 25 grams of the griffin up that I do want to, to ply them and I'll, I'll spin two singles and then ply them together. I may not decide that until I've spun all 50 grams and end up doing a chain ply which will further reduce the yardage so that's probably not the best plan. Um, I mean, I could just spin them as 25 gram singles and then decide later, I suppose. Um, I th from what I gather from, from my researching into how to do spin singles, it all kind of depends on how you treat the yarn once it's off the spindle to get it to stay together, so I'm going to have to full it. Uh, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. The single's coming out quite nicely at the moment. I don't think it's going to fall apart when I take it off the spindle, so... I think I'll probably end up at the moment spinning them as singles and then if I decide that I need to two ply them later I suppose I can always split them and ply them or ply them together or something but yeah I think I'm, I think I'm basically spinning for singles at the moment is what I'm trying to waffle around saying. Um, so yeah so that's my, my, my plans and my spinning and I have totally forgotten to show you one of my works in progress. That was a bit of a, of a faux pas. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will already have seen this actually, and I, I if if the uh, if showing it to you on camera live doesn't give you that good an image, I will put a picture up as well. Um, I'm working on a temperature cross stitch this year instead of a temperature blanket. If you remember in the beginning of January, I was was dilly dallying over whether I was going to do a blanket or a quilt or something. Um, but I've gone with the temperature cross stitch because it's it's actually going to be much cheaper in the long run because I've only got thread to pay for, uh, so lower cost takes up much less space and it's going to be much e easier to display. So have it the right way up. There we have January's weather for Grantham. Um, so each day is represented by a five by five square on the cross stitch. Um, I've got my. Plague Doctor needle minder there because why not at the moment? Uh, and I'm using a um, sparkly thread to denote snow because we have had a little bit this year. Um, so as the year progresses, I'll be updating that. I'm trying to do it in like blocks of days rather than every single day because um, they are quite small, so it doesn't actually take that long to do. Um, so that's that's two sort of works in progress come plans. Um, I do also have another sewing project to cut out in some Ponte Roma that I've got from Minerva. Um, again, for their, for their blog, I'm going to do a scoop pinafore by Sew Different, um, which is this pattern. Um, I have made it before, but I didn't make the wisest choice in fabric when I made it before, so the Ponte Roma should give me a better result. Uh, and those, that's my sort of immediate plans for crafting. Um, I am going to be doing some lace making this year. I've got some projects on the go there. I'm going to be just doing some more weaving. I want to get my weaving tablets out again and show you some of that. 
Um, and I do have obviously my, my Zvorbals, my Ballet Black Nose and my Merinos to, to finish spinning, spinning up that are already on the go. Um, and then obviously I need to make all my hand spun into things. So yeah, um, those are my sort of general plans. Uh, as usual we've got Sock Madness coming up next month so pre be prepared to see plenty of socks. Um, I best clear my sock needles actually, I haven't finished the ones I cast on on Christmas Eve yet. Uh, that's going to be a fairly short term plan too um, and later in the year there'll be lots more spinning for, for fluffy stuff and uh, obviously later in the year will be um, tour de fleece as well so yeah, it'll be a jam packed year this year with lots of crafting um, and I'm aiming to bring my, my round up of what I made to you at the beginning of each month and then something else every week to two weeks in the intervening period. So far I've managed weekly-ish so hopefully we'll keep that going throughout the year uh, but we'll see and uh, life may happen in the meantime and um, so thank you for taking the time to spend a little bit of your day with me today. I hope you've enjoyed my company and if you have feel free to like and subscribe down below and ding that bell for notification next time I pop a video up and until next time happy crafting I will see you soon but bye bye for now.